promising race pupil returns. And... Everyone can see that. It has little to do with the race, Enigma. Baby, don't be mean. Give him another chance. <laughs> Anything for you, babe. Look, babe. The minion of law is also a racist. But his racism is basic and rogue. He thinks he has solved the great race, Enigma, by describing a rogue mechanism of scientific competition. So unadvanced. The basic race education he received in high school has led him to think his phylum are the sole authors of race theory. An esoteric study reaching back to the ancient mass society of Pericarnassus over 4,500 years ago. Basic racist, I take pity on you. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad, like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. Very well. You may enter the door once. Our race conversation here has concluded. Finally. Let's go. An imposing combination of a punch clock 
and the payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. The tarpaulin cloak is still hanging on the railing. The white rectangle of the Revachol Citizens Militia is clearly visible on its back. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingertips. control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Marsh and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Marsh on. Aret. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, René Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. You need to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. 
The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Let's get going. The entire neighborhood can see us up here. Container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moindi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. Well, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hardies. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there. 
with your questions. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. There appear to be cisterns underneath the Union container covers. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarder's Union logo on them. No, not really. Mr. Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Dewe Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Oh Lizzie, she is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Lemaitre said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. Law school? Could she be talking about the Union Fixer, a.k.a. the Gardener? Looks like it. I'm not sure what a Fixer is, but she is a real nice girl. Smart as a whip, too. Telling the Gardener you know her name might throw her off. Perhaps something to consider later. Oh, you want Mr. Everett then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalize what it is today. Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Oh, Mr. Evra is where he always is. In his office, of course. Bye-bye now.
Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Rivershall Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Yes, but you owe him for it. Yes, I know, Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. You want to cry? God, you're weak. 
Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, Mr. Dubois, he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colours, Harry. <laughs> This really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. Yes, we both understand what you meant.
This may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. Honestly, I didn't want to bring it up, Harry. I heard you have become Measurehead's race pupil. Of course, Harry, of course. You're not some kind of a fantastic racist now. And rest assured, no one's gonna hear about it. No one's gonna know what you did with race there, Harry. Your race bonanza is safe with me. Word of how racy it got will never leave Martin Ains. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Yes, we're all trying to do what's best for Martin Ains. Don't feel like you shouldn't work with her just because you and I are such good friends. I'm not a jealous guy. What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. This particular brand of humor he has, it makes for a fine distraction. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Harry, Harry! I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. 
Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Stands tall, proud, erect, and still. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Moving this container, of course. For this purpose it was built. For this purpose it has acted, and now it will rest. I can't see how that was worth the records. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. The crane does not return to its original position. It does not move at all. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. You do? Because I don't. There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? You just picked one out because you wanted to interact with a cargo container. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to talk to the Union, right? No reply. The knock produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. You attempt to turn the handle, to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. 
To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Look how blurry all the lines on these papers are. How unwieldy your own willpower is to yourself. You're like an absurdist Samaran monk, focusing through not focusing. Hermeneutics was almost within your grasp, but now only vague letters float before your eyes. Less meaningful, but aesthetically more pleasing. You are a police officer, not a spiritual healer. You can focus the normal way by turning your attention to something and not letting go. You're trying hard, but the data here is unbelievably dry. Something about containers. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Don't you like a harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Right, you talk to the boss eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? What a thought! Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. He's not lying about not doing it himself. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. Right. 
to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Looking for something, Hunt? Come to tell me to fuck off again? <laughs> oh man, oh man, that's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. God damn. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. He doesn't live in Martinez. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. Snow covers the white on blue police livery of the motor carriage. The Do something important? Something murder related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. This is a Caprice Kanema. The Caprice Motor Corps follow up to their highly successful workhorse, Caprice 40, and the answer to the Lums racing breed, Ferv series. With its air-cooled, rear-mounted 12-cylinder compression ignition engine driving the rear wheels through a four-speed manual gearbox, the Kanema is able to reach 100 km per hour in 13.5 seconds and go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. The high center of balance is offset by a large battery bank mounted at the bottom of the cabin, feeding all the auxiliary systems and making the Kanema effectively a mobile power plant. Due to a quite steep price tag, it is very unusual to see one in police livery. Mm-hmm. You want to take a closer look? Yes, an extraordinary machine. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. Maybe. Yes, definitely, maybe. And means no. 130. I reckon that's a 7 liter V12 there. Man, that's got to be a major advancement over the KR18GU engine on the old Caprice 40. Seven point two supercharged. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. Now, now, that's enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they are mesmerizing. They are also fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Sir, officer, what's the number? 
and the make of the armor, if you know it. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Fall back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. The International Collaboration Police, ICP, is an inter isolary law enforcement service. The crown jewel in the moral intern diadem, alongside EPIS and the coalition government. Just a second, officer. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes, hello? Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? I, uh, let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. You know whom? What? No, why would you even think that? Please, don't bring Gart into this. It's none of your business. God, why can't you just mind your own business? She mutters. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. You hear the call breaking up on the other end of the radio, and then the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Right. Please hold. Ten four, come in. Uh, fireworker, over. Roger that, ten ten, over and out. Yeah, you better keep walking. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. And here I was trying to be polite. Just can't win with you pigs. A brush, an artist. The red splatter is urban expressionism. Lieutenant is desperately searching for another handkerchief. Hatred, disgust, 
It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. On a first name basis with her, are we? Piggy's moving up in the world. Have you got a crush on her? Aching for an opportunity to defend her honor. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aerial graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so... This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know. Summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Yeah? Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Watch your back, Ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Why does art inspire you so much? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic, with that beard and those clothes, disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. Of course not, it's autism. Box drawing, masturbation with a ruler and a sextant, or whatever they use. You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Only the most experimental kind. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real, living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Exactly. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals of the street, you must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery, the trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, Art Cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble.
sturdy metal door guards the...